السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ونحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا دائما أبدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونسه الأمة وجاهد في سبيل الله عز وجل وعبد ربه تعالى حتى أتاه يقين صلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آله الذين أذبوا الله عنه ورزة وتخرهم تطيرا وردوان الله تعالى على صحباته الراشدين مباركين والتابعين لهم بخير وإسن إذا يوم الدين وعلينا معهم برحمتك يا أحمى راهمين وبعض We begin with Allah's name, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer The praise and the thanks belongs to Allah The guardian, evolver, cherish and sustainer of the worlds of the systems of knowledge <clears throat> we praise him, we seek his assistance, and we seek his forgiveness. And we seek refuge with Allah from the mischief that is within inside of ourselves and from the sins that we commit. He whom Allah allows to go astray, none can guide him or her aright. And uh, he who was rightly guided, then there is none who can misguide him. I bear witness there is nothing worthy of worship. There is no God except for Allah who is, out, who is without partner or associate. And I bear witness that our master, our leader, Muhammad, is Allah's slave servant and his messenger. <clears throat> May Allah's blessings and peace be upon our prophet Muhammad and his family, whom Allah desired to purify from Ridges from uh, filth, from the filth of sin, from the filth of disobedience, and gave a thorough purification to. And may, may Allah's pleasure and felicity be upon the righteous, rightly guided companions of the beloved Prophet of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and also upon those who followed them goodness and excellence into the day of judgment and may Allah's blessings and his peace be upon us as well and what follows in this salutation <clears throat> I begin recommending for you but firstly for my own sinful self to have the proper regardfulness the proper consciousness for Allah Azawajal, meaning having taqwa for Allah as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bids us to, commands us to <clears throat> in several ayat of the Qur'an. And among those ayat is, He, Azza wa Jal, said, Ya ayyuha ladhina amanu, ittaqwa allaha wa qulu qawlan sadida, yuslih lakum a'malakum, wa ya ghafil lakum dhanubakum, wa min yuti'i allaha wa rasulahu faqad faza fawzan azimah. And he, Azawajal, said in his glorious book, O oh, those who believe, have taqwa for Allah, and speak a straight, direct word. And then he, Azawajal, says, and then he will forgive you of your sins, set your affairs right and forgive you of your sins, he, Azawajal, says. We also, brothers and sisters in Islam, in remembering the statement of our beloved alayhi salatu salam, prayers and peace be upon him, when he said that the best of speech is the book of Allah, it is the Qur'an. And the best of human guidance is the human guidance of Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu salam. And every newly invented matter in deen is a religious innovation and every religious innovation is an astray 
and every astray is in the fire and we ask Almighty Allah to protect us from the fire. Ameen, Ameen, Ameen. <clears throat> so I am with you again uh, and, and we had a break but I'm with you with you again uh, on this Friday, on this Yom Jum'ah day as previously as in the month of Ramadan during the not ability to be able to have congregational prayers <clears throat> where you are at right now uh, in, in whatever facility that you're in right now in the state of Michigan. And this is being done out of precaution. Uh, for those of you who are not aware that the COVID-19 virus has had an uptick in many places in America, in certain states, the rates are higher than what they were before. <clears throat> and in a number of areas of our country, in big metropolitan areas even, like in the greater Houston area, where Masajid have gone back to not having Salat al Jummah in the Masajid and not having the, uh, the daily congregational prayers as which would be normally done. <clears throat> and this is being implemented, obviously, due to the health concerns as it relates to the global pandemic of COVID-19 in which the United States of America is the most infected and most um, disproportionately um, affected country in the world with the highest amount of death. And uh, we also know because of COVID-19 pandemic that the Hajj this year, that normally pilgrims from all throughout the world would go to pilgrimage in Mecca in recent years has been no less than 2 million. And for this particular year, because of COVID-19, only people who are in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia right now who have permission will be able to make Hajj. So the Saudis are not uh, allowing people from even neighboring countries, countries uh, such as uh, the, uh, the Emirates or Kuwait, uh, Jordan, countries in close proximity with the Arab world, much less non-Arab countries. They are not allowing people who are not in the country to uh, to attend Hajj this year, which is something that is <clears throat> um, unprecedented in in my lifetime. So it is to say I'm just mentioning these things to you in the first part of this uh, address. In the beginning part of this address, I'm mentioning it to you to say that uh, the ability for us to not be able to pray Sat al Jumah and Jumah. Um, is what we can say something that we prefer not to see, but there are cases when such things are necessities. And in the, <clears throat> in the objectives of the Islamic sacred law, the Maqasid al Sharia, we have the principle of Hizl Nafs, which I mentioned to you before, which is the protection of life. Right, so uh, of course, Allah is the one who is the giver and who's the taker of life. But in this regard, we are not to be reckless. That uh, our health is is an amana, our bodies is an amana from Allah Our bodies are an amana, and we're supposed to take care of those uh, properly. And even when people are not Muslim, are putting forth. Uh, safety measures, even though they may not have a belief for the concept of, of a divine trust or a manna. But when we're talking about things for the public good and the curtailing of certain uh, aspects that normally would be um, recommended within our faith, um, that for the public good and for our own safety, then 
uh, we should abide by those rules and abide by those policies for uh, the common good or what uh, is sometimes called uh, maslaha, which is for the, the common good and to avert a mafsada or something that would bring uh, harm uh, to the society in general, which would include harm to the Muslims. <clears throat> so we would keep that in mind. What I want to mention to you in the second part of this address <clears throat> is that we just had a uh, national holiday in the United States of America, July 4th, which is known as Independence Day. And uh, without delving too much into uh, the, the history of this day, of, of Independence Day, well, we as Muslims, uh, we have perhaps a deeper or metaphysical understanding of what independence really means. What does independence really mean outside of one country or one group of people declaring their political independence from another group of people. One of the great scholars of Islam, Muhammad ibn Idris al-Shafi'i, rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi, he said in a very famous saying, إِنَّ اللَّهَ خَلَقَاكَ هَرًّا فَكُنْ كَمَا خَلَقَاكَ Shafi'i said, Surely Allah created you free. So be just like how He created you, meaning free. Now, what does this freedom entail? This freedom, <clears throat> brothers and sisters of Islam, relates to the kalima, La ilaha illallah. There is no God but Allah. And this is where true freedom comes from. One of the meanings of la ilaha illallah, that there is no God except for Allah. There is no God except for the one God, la ilaha illallah. One of the meanings of this, a secondary meaning of this is la ma'buda illallah. That there's nothing worthy of worship or there's nothing worthy of being enslaved to except Allah. And we have a Hadith Qudsi as well. It's narrated through what some call a uh, the golden uh, chain, a uh, golden silsila. That is said in this Hadith Qudsi, and Hadith Qudsi we know is a Hadith in which our beloved said that Allah Azza wa Jal said such and such. And this hadith Qudsi is La ilaha illahu hisni faman dakhla hisni amana min adhabi. Meaning, there is no God but Allah is my fortress, Allah is saying. There is no God but Allah, meaning that statement, is my fortress. And whoever enters into my fortress shall be safe from my punishment. And what is the meaning of, uh, of this? We also have a saying of Imam Malik, rahmatullah as well as Imam Shafi'i, rahmatullah and also a narration that is narrated through the, uh, the chain of Imam Ali al -Rida. May Allah sanctify his soul, Qadis Allahu Ruha. That is al imanu qawlun wa amal. That faith is in speech, is in the qal, it's in the qal, but it's also in the amal, it's also in the deed. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as we can take from this meaning, that la ilaha illallah, saying la ilaha illallah, believing in la ilaha illallah, and acting upon La ilaha illallah is what grants us protection and thusly also relates to our freedom. Freedom from what? Is it freedom from others oppressing us? 
Is it freedom from others denying us our rights? Well, this could be the ultimate implication of it at some point in time uh, due to Allah's qadr, due to his divine decree. But is having the freedom from number one, taking our desires and taking our caprice as lords, taking our desires, taking our whims, taking our caprice as lords or something that lords over us or something that controls us. We end up being enslaved to our hoa, being enslaved to our desires. So we have the kalama la ilaha illallah which is freedom. And then Allah Azza wa Jal has given us al-aqal, has given us, or plural in Arabic, uqul, has given us intellect, which is not even a good way of translating this, but has given us the, the capacity, right, that to be able to restrain our desires to restrain our whims, to be able to struggle inside of ourselves in, in our intentions and in our thoughts as it relates to acting off of these things in improper ways. This is something very important. And that, uh, because many people uh, say that they believe in God, but in fact, they are slaves to their whims. They are slaves to their desires, slaves to their appetites. Even messages that we've been given in the broader society. You know, one thing I had pointed out by one of my teachers, which uh, it later on turning out being part of the, um, <clears throat> I believe it was the second khutbah I ever gave a long time ago, uh, probably uh, around 20 years ago. And you, you still see these commercials at sporting events and things such as this. But there was a TV commercial that said, obey your thirst, drink Sprite. Obey your thirst, drink Sprite. Now, for us as Muslims, we don't obey our thirst. We don't obey our appetites. Right? We don't let those be our emir. We don't let those be our commander. We don't let our thirsts or our desires be our Lord, right? Our Lord, our place of obedience starts with, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whatever he told us and command us to do, we should try to do to the best of our abilities and our capacities. And those things that he told us to stay away from, that he prohibited, and those things that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi wa alayhi wa sallam, told us to stay away from, or that was forbidden, then we should stay far away from those. Even if our desires uh, are bidding us to that, or the whispers that come from the whispers of shaitan, or his shayateen, uh, when people or forces in the broader culture or the society, TV and music, are calling us to uh, to obey uh, a type of appetite that they are feeding us, then we should stay away from that. Also, in regards, brothers and sisters, Islam, and there's a very important lesson to this. Uh, and I mentioned uh, the Declaration of Independence and La ilaha illallah being our true emancipation proclamation. La ilaha illallah is our true emancipation proclamation i want to go back to the story of sayyidu muadhinin yawm qiyama bilal al habashi radiyallahu uh, an the leader of those who, who called the adhan that will be on the day of judgment bilal the abyssinian or bilal the ethiopian may allah be well pleased with him so we know that in Islamic history, Bilal was one of the first people to accept Islam in Mecca. As a matter of fact, amongst those who had been enslaved, he was the first of those who had been enslaved, uh, who was 
enslaved at the time to have accepted Islam. He was the first of those who were enslaved at that time to have accepted Islam, Bilal, with one light to Al Ali. And Bilal was later freed by uh, Abu Bakr Siddiq. Abu Bakr Siddiq, radiallahu anhu. Now, outwardly, Bilal was in bondage, and Abu Bakr outwardly was the means that freed Bilal from physical slavery. This is true. This is this is outward, and this is true. But inwardly, we know that Bilal, the occasions of this freedom was this. Bilal accepted Islam. And for his refusal to denounce the oneness of Allah, and for his refusal to, to denounce belief in Prophet Muhammad alayhi salam, and his refusal to bow down to the racist or tribalistic political order of Quraysh in Mecca. We know that he was taken out by the slave master and he was tortured uh, in the desert by Umayyah ibn Khalif and uh, the others. And they uh, tied him up and they had him on the hot sand in the blazing desert. And they put big boulders, rocks on top of him, almost crushing the life of, upon him. Where it was if almost the very life breath was being crushed out of Bilal. Like Bilal, basically, as George Floyd, who was killed not long ago by the police in Minneapolis, or um, the, uh, the other gentleman, Eric Gardner, who was killed in, uh, in New York City, where they both said, I can't breathe. Well, Bilal couldn't breathe. Physically, he was being crushed. And these people, he's almost on the verge of dying. And these people say, well, just renounce the message of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Come back to worshiping these idol gods. Renounce what he's saying. And you can be free and you can be comfortable. And Bilal, what he said was a very powerful statement. He just said, ahadun, ahad, ahadun, ahad. There's only one, there's only one, meaning only one God. This is the statement of Bilal. So at that very point, and as I mentioned before, outwardly speaking, Abu Bakr as siddiq later paid for Bilal's liberation from physical slavery. But when Bilal proclaimed truly, La ilaha illallah, when he truly proclaimed La ilaha illallah and he acted upon La ilaha illallah, the haqiqah or the spiritual reality of it is that Bilal was free at that point when he was being tortured. The haqiqah of the reality is that Abu Bakr Siddiq didn't free Bilal. The reality is, is that the message of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam gave Bilal his freedom. لِكُلِّ حَقٍ حَقِيقًا We have this hadith, right? And, and for every outward truth, there is a deeper reality, or there's a, or there's a spiritual truth behind every outward truth. And that was the haqiqah of the spiritual station of Bilal. That was, his, that was his freedom. And that's a type of freedom that no government, no set of laws, or no group of people can give the insan, to give the human being. The true statement of freedom or the true emancipation proclamation 
is La ilaha illallah, Muhammadun Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi rashidin wa sallam taslima kathira. That is a real independence. And then once, once we as Muslims try to embody this La ilaha illallah, to live La ilaha illallah, to live upon this reality, then we could be truly free inside. We can be truly free inside, not only from following our desires and that which the broader society and capitalism and commercialism calls us to, but it frees us from having any inferiority complexes. Right? That people have the right to be like gods over us, like we're enslaved to them. And this is part of the issue that our Muslim spiritual ancestors who were brought here against their will as chattel slaves, that they never accepted this. And although they were in chains on the outside, these people were free and they resisted the, the racism of the British and French racist slave masters. And this was depicted in several uh, books and movies, as well as in real life uh, accounts. Of those that are most known are Kunta Kente and, and Roots, who came from the Mandinka tribe. The Mandinka tribe to this day is basically an all uh, Muslim uh, Kabila, a Muslim tribe. And I've traveled to the land of the Mandinka people in West Africa. I've learned from the uh, from the from from some of the Shiyukh of who are Mandinka, and also from the story of the Amistad and the slave rebellion, how there actually were some Muslims on that ship, in which those people rebelled against the people who enslaved them on that ship, and were la later able to get their freedom and go back to Africa. Many weren't able to go back, but some did. But the point of the matter is. Whether they able were able to get free physically, they were free inside of their hearts and inside of their minds. And what and what was that that shielded them from from feeling like they were inferior or feeling like they were enslaved to other people? It was the kalima la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. So let us keep our tongues moist and renew our faith and invigorate our faith with saying often, La ilaha illallah. To do this dhikr, La ilaha illallah, often. And especially on the day of Jum'ah, in which good deeds are amplified, let us be involved in what is called al baqiyat al salihat, in those deeds that are good and that are lasting. And to do this more, especially uh, during the time of Asr and Maghrib on Fridays. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar, wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al -azim. Subhanallah, meaning praising Allah and glorifying Allah, meaning that Allah is free of all faults or any mistakes. He's transcendent. Subhanallah. Alhamdulillah, and the praise and thanks belongs to Allah. La ilaha illallah. There's nothing worthy of worship except for Allah. Wallahu akbar. And Allah is the greatest. He's greater than everything. He's greater than all of his creation, and he's greater than any type of limitations that we can think of, of trying to place him in a certain location, that he's confined to a certain location to a certain time. Allahu Akbar, Allah is greater than all of that. وَلَا حَوْلَ وَلَا كُوَّةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ الْعَلِي الْعَظِيمِ And there is no might nor power except by Allah who is the, who is, uh, the, the most exalted and the most magnificent. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we ask Almighty Allah to have us die 
to live. We ask Allah to have us live and die upon the kalima la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. We ask Almighty Allah to have us live and die upon the kalima of la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. We ask Almighty Allah to have us live and die upon the kalima of la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Inna Allah wa malaikatuhu yusallunu ala nabi ya ayyuha alladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallamu taslima Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad kama sallita ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim wa salli alayna ma'ahum innaka hamidun majid wa barak ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim wa barak alayna ma'ahum innaka hamidun majid we ask Almighty Allah Azawajal to send his choices, blessings, and peace upon our Prophet and the family of our Prophet Muhammad. Just as he has sent these blessings and peace upon Ibrahim, upon Abraham and the family of Abraham. We ask Almighty Allah Azawajal to forgive the believing men and believing women and the Muslim men and the Muslim women, those who are living and those who are deceased. And may Allah Azawajal forgive us among them. And we ask Almighty Allah Azawajal to lift the COVID-19 pandemic from humankind. We ask Almighty Allah Azawajal to lift the COVID-19 pandemic from humankind. We ask Almighty Allah Azawajal to lift the COVID-19 pandemic from amongst humankind. Subhana rabbika bi'izzati amma yasifoon. Wassalamun aram rusaleen. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. El Fatiha. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.